Have you ever wanted to make music sound simultaneously ancient and modern? To feel both simple and deep? This is the aesthetic produced by Arvo Pertz's Tintinabuli style. I'm going to explain fundamental concepts and give you a practical toolkit for composing without getting bogged down trying to be comprehensive, because I want you to be able to make music as soon as you finish watching this video. I've taught about Arvo Pärt's style in a college course on techniques used by composers in the 20th century. And to make this video, I took my material from that course and improved it by adding audio mockups and animation so that you can see in real time how the music relates to its underlying structure. This is more than an introduction to Pärt's theory though. I'll show you nuances for composing regarding instrument register, ways you can go beyond an underlying seven note scale, and how to use rhythmic delay to add harmonic complexity. At the end, I'll also explore how Pert's music might reorient the way you think about other music, and I'll show you how I recomposed Bach's Cello Suite No. 1 in the style of Arvo Pert. Let me start with an overview of Arvo Pert style Tintunabili structure before getting into the details for what each voice is. There will be two types of musical voices, M voices, and T voices. An M voice is made up of scale segments, whereas T voices will only use members of a tonic triad. Officially, T here is for tintinabili, but you can remember the T as in tonic triad. An M voice functions as a structural origin of all other voices, either directly or indirectly. Each T voice is going to branch out systematically from some M voice. If you add a second M voice, it will relate to the first M voice, usually in parallel motion, and additional T voices can also branch out from it. To write the first M voice, we need an underlying scale to move through, and a tonic triad to provide some orientation for each line we write. Minor keys are a bit more common in Pert's music, so I'm starting with an A minor scale and an A minor chord as our substrate. With this chosen, melodic lines of an M voice will all be segments from an A minor scale, and each segment must orient itself in relation to a central pitch taken from the tonic triad. We can change the central pitch in a piece, but for now, let's make our central pitch the tonic, A. For Arvo Pärt, there are four orientations of a scale segment to a central pitch, and he calls these melodic modes. In relation to the central pitch, a scale segment may go down and toward the central pitch, up and toward the central pitch. It can also move up and away or down and away. When writing an M voice, you should try to think in terms of some systematic or symmetric design, but the specifics are up to you. In this example, with the central note A, I've written segments which are all in the mode of descending toward the central pitch. But I made a simple system so that segments will increase in size from one note to two to three, etc. If we choose instead to use ascending away as our mode, we'd have this. We could also do the same, but alternate between descending toward the central pitch and ascending toward the central pitch and end up with this. Creating symmetry like this underlies the composition Spiegel im Spiegel by mirroring segments from different modes and gradually increasing the size of the segments. In that piece, the underlying scale and triad are F major, but the central note is still A. Notice how segments gradually increase in size while cycling through the different modes. Starting at the segments of three notes, the segments move up and toward, then down and toward the central note. Then they increase in size and move away from the central note. They continue to grow while alternating pairs of segments move toward and away from the central note. 
Notice also here the lowest note G in the M voice corresponds to the lowest note available on the violin. Thinking about range of instruments is an important consideration when defining the system you want to put in place, because you're going to apply this system onto real instruments with their own practical concerns. Arvo Pert often picks keys and structures to correspond with the limits of an instrument's range. The example here comes from a duet for violin and piano, but there's an arrangement of this same piece for solo organ. In that version, it's transposed into C major so that the lowest bass notes correspond to the lowest keys on the organ's manual and almost the entire span of the pedal board. Let's have a look at another M voice design found in Peart's music, which I've transposed to A minor. The M voice has individual phrases, each of which starts and ends on a different member of the tonic triad. Then lines start and end on different pairs of notes from the triad. There's balance here. After motion upward through notes of the triad to get to the high tonic pitch, we get every pair of notes downward to rest on the lower tonic pitch. Working with a text offers yet another possibility for structuring an M voice. Each syllable of a word can determine a segment's length. You don't have to do this, but this is precisely what occurs in Arvo Pert's De Profundis. In that piece, each syllable gets one note, so each word defines the length of a segment. If a word has two syllables, it'll define a segment of two notes of the scale, whereas a word of five syllables defines a segment with five notes. Let's see an example with a text. I'll use something Latin to keep things sounding sacred, but you could use any language. Using Google Translate, I came up with this. In this case, the number of syllables in each word is respectively three, one, two, five, one, and three. If I pick the mode that ascends away from a central note, we end up with this melodic line. Let's hear this example of syllabic text setting. I've put in some organ accompaniment which incorporates T voices, and in the next section, I'll show you how to write those. In order to write a T voice, we need an M voice to tether it to. Let's have our M voice be a complete iteration of the A minor scale, first going up and then coming back down to where we started. I should point out that even this has some structural balance to it. I've created an idea to go seven steps up and away from the central note, A. Then I wrote a symmetrical response that goes seven steps down and toward our central pitch. A T voice essentially has two rules. You may only use notes of our tonic triad, and those notes should relate to an M voice in some patterned way. Since I've picked A minor, our T voice will then only use the pitches A, C, or E. Let's have a look at four possible relationships or positions that a T voice might occupy in relation to our M voice. The T voice can be the first available note of the triad above the M voice. It can be the first available note below the M voice. It can be the second available note above or it can be the second available note below. In these examples, I'll notate the T voice with diamond note heads, which to me seems fitting as the T voice reminds me of natural string harmonics. When a T voice is the first available pitch above or below, I'll call this a close position, in contrast to an open position, which would be further away. To make actual music, we come up with a way of activating and expressing an underlying structure of M and T voices. Arvo Pert's minimalist piano piece for Alina has just one M voice and one T voice. But a good starting point is probably to use three or four underlying voices. Since I haven't yet explained how to write a second M voice, let's add two T voices to our M voice that went up and down the A minor scale and use that as an underlying structure. One T voice will be the closest position above, and the other will be the closest position below. 
To make this into a piece of music, we need to pick what instruments or voice types will express the structure and come up with a patterned way of expressing the structure. Pert's Variations for the Healing of Arinushka uses this exact structure for its variations, but each variation is a different way of elaborating the same structure at the piano. In the first variation, all three voices are expressed in a single line with a rhythmic pattern of short, short, long. It starts with the upper T voice and then moves to the lower T voice before holding the M voice for twice as long. A nice touch is that holding the notes of the M voice longer makes that line easier to hear. And there's an even more beautiful subtlety. When the M voice reverses direction and goes down the scale, the pattern flips as well, so that the pattern begins from the lower T voice instead of the upper one. That's just one way to elaborate the underlying structure. Pert demonstrates other options in the other variations of that piece. Let's try out another example of creating a structure and turning it into something musical. I'm starting with an M voice pattern of segments that decreases in size from four notes to three to two and then to one, such that each segment corresponds to a different one of our modes. Though admittedly, the last segment won't have any motion to or from the tonic since it's only one note, but it continues the pattern. Now let's add two T voices above the M voice. I've started with one T voice in the first position above, and the second one will be a member of the tonic triad above the first T voice. Before activating this into music, I want to compose a second phrase that demonstrates how Pert's music can create layers of symmetry. I'm still cycling through all four modes, but this time I started with the descending mode toward the central note instead of away. I want to build symmetry into the second phrase by having the T voices occur below the M voice instead of above. I'm going to make this phrase in the style of an a cappella choral piece like Arvo Pert's Magnificat. This time each singer will correspond to an M or T voice of the underlying structure. And I want to add another layer of symmetry in how I choose which singers take which part. One of Pert's hallmarks in choral writing involves pairing up combinations of singers so that when the full chorus finally comes together, it represents a culmination of these pairings. In my example so far, I only have two phrases of structure to work with, but it's enough for me to demonstrate the idea. I'll make each half for a different pair of singers. The first phrase will be for tenor and bass, and the second half, when the T voices go below the M voice, I'll write that for soprano and alto and we now have another layer of symmetry between the two phrases. To generate some interest, I've added a rhythmic pattern of longer notes corresponding with the beginnings and ends of each scale segment in an M voice. I'm still indicating the roles of M and T voice by putting the T voice into diamond note heads in the score, and M voice segments are shown with slur lines. Since this is still a sketch, I don't have dynamics, bar lines, or text, but you should be able to hear the layers upon layers of structure and symmetry that I'm building in. If I were composing this with a text, I'd probably want to take that into consideration from the beginning as I build up the underlying structure. To get a nice thick, lush, and complex harmonic fabric, we can add a second M voice, which is related to the first one by moving in parallel tenths, sixths, or thirds. Since my example is already written for voices in close position, let's make another M voice that is close to the rest of the notes by setting it just a third away. 
to continue the systematic symmetry I've begun. I think the new M voice should lie below the bass part in the first half, but then when the positions invert, the new M voice can now be above the soprano line. We have a thicker texture with more branches and reflections from the original M voice. The last example had M voices a third apart, but it also works really well to have parallel tenths between your primary and secondary M voices. This is a very frequent construction in Arvo Pert's music because there's enough space to fit another voice in between if you want to. I'm going to make the next example for solo organ, so I'm switching to E minor. This is strategic because I have a structure in mind already, and I want the lowest note of my structure to correspond to the lowest note of the organ. Pert frequently makes underlying structures that will match the lowest ranges of instruments. We saw this once already when the lowest note of the M voice for Spiegel im Spiegel corresponded to the lowest note of a violin. I'll start with a pattern of scale segments for the primary M voice, which I'm planning to put into the left hand of the organist. A secondary M voice, which will go into the pedals, is going to be a tenth below it. The right hand can take two T voices in open spacing above the primary M voice. You don't have to choose an open position like I did, but whatever relationship you choose, you have to stick with it. As I built my underlying structure, I was thinking about more than just the lowest notes on the instrument. I strategically designed the system for my M voice so that there would be a climactic high point around two thirds of the way through the piece. To me, this provides some aesthetic balance. It feels like it builds up to something and still had some time to settle down after. Since I've already planned out the instrument, I only need to decide on some rhythm for this. I'll put the M voices on downbeats and arpeggiate the T voices, but you're free to try out another time signature or rhythmic pattern, as long as your choice for rhythm and meter stays consistent. Let's hear how this sounds. I think this sounds pretty good. It's a texture that's simple enough to improvise with, but it might also be a little bit too simple. Notice, for example, that whenever an M voice has a particular note, that entire measure will be the same as any other measure which has the same note in the M voice. What I have here is a piece that evokes Parrot at a local level, but maybe doesn't create quite enough depth and variety over the course of the piece. I'll show you two great ways of adding more variety and depth. One way is to go beyond a seven note diatonic scale for your underlying structure. A common way to achieve this is to do something with raised and lowered versions of scale degrees six and seven in your structure if you're using a minor scale. You might opt for a change in scale to correspond with different sections of the piece, or you might only raise these notes for lines that ascend to tonic. 
What I'll demonstrate here is to only raise scale degrees six and seven in the lowest register of the lowest voice. I'll start by sketching out a new structure, this time in C minor, with the intention of later working it into a four-part choral work. My M voice can go into the alto with the pattern of alternating descending and ascending segments. Now I'll add a T voice above and below in open position using only members of the C minor triad. We can make the bass a second M voice. I'll write it a tenth below my alto M voice. Now we're ready for the extra spice. I'm going to raise scale degrees six and seven, but only in my lowest voice. We have an underlying structure with a little more complexity, which is great. But when we elaborate this into a piece of music, I wanna show you how to create even more variety so that measures with the same pitch in the M voice won't all end up identical, like in the last organ piece I made. I'm going to incorporate a pattern of rhythmic displacement so that some notes will stretch out into the following measure. Then each voicing of a measure will depend not just on the note of the M voice in that measure, but also on the material preceding it. With the underlying structure I already have, I'll make a sketch for SATB choir without text and add in rhythmic displacements of the T voices so that each note lasts three beats followed by a rest. My M voices will stick to downbeats to reinforce a 4-4 meter, but I'll delay the T voices consistently by two or three beats so that those notes hold into the following measure, blending the consecutive sonorities into a cascade of suspensions. There will be a lot more variety overall, and notice how there will even be a voice overlap when the bass has its big leap up to A flat, because the tenor will still be holding G from the previous measure. I'd like to close by showing you how this material can give you a new perspective on existing music. Have a look at this example from Bach's famous cello suite number no. one in G major. The cello arpeggiates notes to convey a sense of three-part harmony. On most days, I would describe this as a simple progression of tonic, predominant, dominant, occurring over a repeated bass note. But today, after going through this material, maybe it sounds a little different. If we change our mindset from Austro-German tonality, the upper voice, B, C, B, can also sound like motion of an M voice, away from and back toward a central note of B in G major. I could hear the motion of D and E as another M voice moving in parallel six. And maybe that little lower neighbor under C isn't so much a lower neighbor as motion to a member of the tonic triad. 
Having M voices a sixth apart and filling in between with a member of the tonic triad is what Arvo Pert does in the piano part to Spiegel im Spiegel. I want to make a little homage to Bach and Pert by taking that opening measure of Bach's cello suite and continuing it in the style of Arvo Pert. I can set some systematic parameters which could have given rise to the texture of Bach's opening measures and then follow through with some of the textures and processes found in Pert's Spiegel im Spiegel. Not everything here will sound exactly like Pert, and I'm okay with that, since this homage will be more about finding inspiration than precisely imitating. I'll make the upper line the primary M voice. The middle line can be a T voice in open position below it. And I'll have the lowest voice as a second M voice in parallel tense to the first M voice, just like in my last two examples. In the style of Spiegel im Spiegel, I'll make our M voice articulated in long notes on a string instrument. But since this is drawn from Bach's cello suite, I'll make the line for cello instead of violin. To evoke Spiegel im Spiegel, I'm going to have the piano left hand express the second M voice only on downbeats, so that on beat three, it can play an additional T voice pattern related to the M voice by alternating between twinkling highs and rumbling lows. In Arvo Pert's style, I'm specifically setting this up so that the pattern will push toward the extremes of a piano's range. If you want to hear this, I've done that in a separate video, where the four melodic modes are each represented by branches of a fractal-based tree, and you can see the path and symmetry of the M voice as light moving along those branches. <laughs> 